This video is cortisol DHE ratio part two, and it'll be on the stomach. The first one was on the brain. This one's gonna be on the stomach. Now, when we say stomach, we mean a number of things. It could be heartburn, indigestion, bloating, gas, belching, constipation, diarrhea, things like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease. All of these respond good to nutritional support. And so all of them, we put in that same category. So we do real good with those, but sometimes we're not, you know, it's not coming along like we should, we should see it come along. So we have to look at the cortisol DHA ratio because when a body is, somebody's maladapting to stress, that messes with their cortisol DHA ratio. You can look at my first video on the brain to see a little bit of that, but we already know that it's going to be low. We don't want hydrochloric acid to be low. We want the pH to be 1.5, which is pretty close to pure acid. And so we don't want it going up to four and up to five over five, you don't digest protein. So the common prescription for this is a proton pump inhibitor. So a proton pump inhibitor does some things. It, it increases uh, the pH. So that means it decreases the hydrochloric acid. So we don't want to decrease hydrochloric acid. Proton pump inhibitor so I see people that have been on 10, 15 years. Um, the literature says 12 weeks is a maximum. It's a short-term solution, but not a long-term solution. And we don't want to decrease those hydrochloric acid levels. The big, big problem we're seeing today, and I'm seeing today, is infants on proton pump inhibitors. Now that's a problem. It's gonna set them up for a lifetime of digestive problems, possibly. Um, food sensitivities, possibly, and also uh, allergies, possibly. So we don't want to see infants on that, especially when it takes just a couple food supplements to help those kids feel better. So we don't like to see that. Now, the cortisol DHE ratio, when it's off, will affect the stomach. And you can see here, affects the stomach, decreases your hydrochloric acid. That, in turn, is going to cause dysbiosis. So the good bacteria, the microbiome of the gut, gets all, you know, uh, imbalanced. And so then you start getting symptoms. Now we hear, well, let's give probiotics. Well, we need a probiotic short term, but we want a prebiotic to start making that good bacteria multiply. So we give some stuff that's like the soil of the guts, uh, for lack of a better term. And that makes it multiply itself. So we don't want to just keep taking probiotics long term for life. We want to fix that gut fix that microbiome. So you can see this leads to some of the things I talked about, irritable bowel, some gas, bloat, bloating, food allergies, and I, I mentioned a number of other things, and there's certainly other things that I mentioned that I didn't mention. So that's gonna cause that type of problem. So we need to give the right nutritional support to see the right response, you know, so we don't have to have those symptoms. I mean, way back in the day, way back in the day, I had those symptoms and it was miserable. Every week I see new patients with digestive things and any patient, we start with the digestive system every time, no matter what their problem is, unless they simply don't have any digestive problems, of course. So, cause you need to get the gut well nutritionally to get the body well. So that's it for today. Until next time, reclaim your health, reclaim your life.